first check all the supply components against the packing list in your instructions. We will start with the connection box assembly. Please note that the fiberglass rod can cause irritation to the hands and protective gloves should be worn. Take the master boom clamp and uh, remove the nuts and then the small aluminium strip. The clamp can now be inserted through the two holes in the fiberglass rod. The ammonium strip can be placed back on the bolts and the nuts can be loosely put onto the bolts. Next, take the two aluminium rods and insert them into the mast boom clamp as shown. With a tiny umbrella wedged in it When we bury our things With the landmines in the old sandpit Way to fit Using the 10 ball spanner, tighten the two nuts to hold the aluminium tubes firmly in place Should we dig up our things We will soon lose an arm or a leg box and the primary elements can now be added to the assembly. First remove the protective cap off the top of the fiberglass rod and then slide the clamp of the connection box down over the top of the fiberglass rod and then put the plastic cap back on again. The plastic cap is just there to stop you getting fiberglass splints in your hand. add the elements to the telescopic poles. So remove the top cap, the smaller one, from one of the poles and tip it up to slide out the top element. Just pull it out and give it a small twist to pull to lock it to the second element section of the telescopic rod. I'm putting on the black coils here which are the 80 meter coils and note that they're colour coded the red end on this coil goes towards the centre of the antenna, it's the one that connects to the primary element, the yellow connects to the secondary element. I'm attaching it to the telescopic pole with the bungee cord just by tucking the cord through the loop and tightening it up by pulling while pressing the button. That is going just on the end of the second section. Uh, you'll be able to adjust it later to make sure the ones are not length. Then we're adding the secondary element, so again it's colour coded, so we're going to put the yellow end into the yellow end of the coil. First we're going to slide over the little collet on the end cap to the end of the rod, and those just hold the cable in place for the top section. Slide the cable through, and then we're going to plug it into the top end of the coil. Show. set up. The collet should be about in the centre of the top section. Make sure the plug is firmly in and there's a little bit of slack there and the end sleeve should be just over the yellow section holding it up to the very top of the section. Then we can take the second telescopic pole and repeat the process exactly the same but here we're going to use the other coil and this one has the black end going towards the primary element at the centre and the blue end going out towards the secondary element which hangs down over the end. Now we can connect the second primary element wires and extend the telescopic poles. So first I'm going to take the red primary element, plug it into the red end of the 40 metre coil here and then just slowly pull out each of the sections and as they get to the next section give it a small twist and pull to lock it in place and then use the two clips for each side to hold the cable in place. 
the smaller one first and just slide it down until it's a give it a lock to hold it in place and then slide it down until it's at the position where it just holds the cable reasonably tight but be careful not to stretch the cable too tightly. We'll add another section and then put the larger one on next. Again just twist the two ends together over the top of the cable slide it down until it gets to the point at which it's holding the cable reasonably tightly. We're going to leave the lower sections of the telescopic pole in place and we'll extend it out fully later when it's in place. Uh, now we're just going to repeat the process for the second telescopic pole. This one we've got the black ended primary element wire. We're going to plug it into the black end of the 80 meter coil. Now we've got all the elements completely assembled, we can add the assembly to the mast. Here I'm going to demonstrate using a small stub mast, but uh, the actual detail will depend on the type of mast that you can put this antenna onto. We're going to use the 8 nut clamp and secure it onto the top of the mast using the 13mm spanner just to tighten the four bolts on the inside, get it clamped onto the mast there. Then taking care not to touch the fiberglass rod, because I've taken my gloves off now. I'm just going to slide it down to the line into the second section of the 8 nut clamp. Tighten up the outside four bolts to hold the fiberglass rod firmly onto the top of the mast. Sure. We can now fit the telescopic poles to the assembly. Just remove the screw on end cap from the lower end of the telescopic pole. A little bit of foam in there just to stop it rattling around. And then we're just going to lift it up, put a few turns on it to keep the wire attached to the pole and let it hang down, and then just slide it over the top of the aluminium pole. Just a few turns going on, and then just slide it over the top. And it should go all the way down to the bottom there. Just going to repeat the process for the second telescopic pole. Note that with some mast arrangements you won't be able to reach high enough to be able to extend the telescopic pole sections fully, so in that case you need to do all this on the ground and then put the mast assembly on the top of the mast. Complete the assembly by fully extending the telescopic poles, starting with the small section. Just slide it out, put the pull and the twist to lock it in place. Ensure the cable is just loosely wrapped around the ship. The final part of the setup is now just to connect the coax cable to the connection box. Scream your lungs to shout, sing words your heart and met. A futile and will fail, but will make the And then before raising the aerial to its intended height, just take a loop and give some strain relief with a bit of sticky tape. We're now ready to start setting up the aerial for the intended band of operation, in this case 80 meters. I'm going to use a SARC 100 analyzer, set it to scan on the 80 meter band, and then record the position of the lowest SWR. If you haven't got an analyzer, of course you can use your transmitter, just sweep through the frequency band and look for the lowest SWR on a simple SWR meter. With no extensions attached, I'm seeing the best WR at 3.82 MHz, so I'm just going to note that down. Obviously I want to move that frequency down to lower in the band, so I'm going to add some extensions. And as a rough guess, based on experience, I think we need to add about 15 centimetres here. So that's the 10 centimetre length added. 
and now I'm going to put in the 5cm to give me a total of 15cm and repeat on the other side. I'm then going to repeat the scan, 80 meter band. And now see that the resonant frequency for the lowest SWR has come down to 3.63 megahertz, which is where I would like it to be, so I'm going to stick at that. But obviously you can add more or take away extensions until you get to the right frequency for operation. Now that the resonant frequency will change slightly when the antenna is raised to its operating height and you can allow for this with a bit of experience. The DMV2 is now ready to be raised to its operating height and put to good use. Now you get many contacts. Thank you for watching.